Hi, this is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry. Join me now as I deliver this stirring message from God's Holy Word. John Trapp's commentary said, The worse the times are, the better we should be. Stars are most needed in a dark night. In Daniel 12, 3, we read, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. The wise are those who live for God and heaven. Know the Lord and act upon that knowledge. Serve God and keep his commandments. They do what they can to make others wise unto salvation. They are instruments in turning men to God and converting men to the worship of the true God. They truly shine as stars in this dark world, this evil and adulterous generation, this wicked and adulterous generation this adulterous and sinful generation. Oh, how we need for the stars to shine in these darkened times. The Bible calls it an adulterous generation because it is marked by those whose hearts wander from God, though they profess him to be their husband or Lord. In the Holy Scriptures, the relationship of the Jews to God was often represented as a marriage contract. God was their husband, the Jewish people were his wife. As an adulterous wife, Israel departed from God, to whom by covenant they had been espoused. The same holds true for the present-day church in the New Covenant, who professes to be the spouse of God, yet has treacherously departed from him and has broken covenant with him. All her unfaithfulness and disobedience, her backsliding, her love of the world, and her aversion to the truth is considered as a breach of the marriage contract. She becomes infected with the spirit of the age, which is an age of self-indulgence, an age of aggravated spiritual blindness. Her love of the world blinds her understanding. She is in the impure embraces of the world and the flesh, lying in wickedness. She is like the adulterous woman who carries on secretly and artfully that which is not easily detected. Proverbs 30, 20 describes her in this way. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Likewise, the unfaithful church is under the guise of purity and holiness with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. She passes herself for an innocent person while openly and impudently denying herself to be adulteress. She sins in secret, forgetting him who sees in secret. She calls and accounts herself to be faithful to the Lord, yet in truth, she secretly lives in the sin of adultery, the sin of unfaithfulness to her Lord. In James 4.4, 4, the Apostle James addressed this issue by saying, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. God is the rightful spiritual husband of every professing Christian. When a believer looks away from his master and casts 
longing eyes on a stranger, he becomes an adulterer. Such is the case when he is not true to the worship and service of his God while professing to love and serve the Lord. Such is the case when he forsakes Christ, to whom he is devoted and espoused to cleave to other things. Such is the case when he embraces the world, gives up his best affections to the things of this world, which are due to God only. He places his happiness in the world, conforms to it, and complies with its manners and customs. He courts the favor of worldly men, delights in their company and conversation, and will do anything rather than lose their friendship. Imagine that. He loves the world more than God, the world that lies in wickedness, in the power of the wicked one. It is an evil world, alien in its principles and pursuits from the will and glory of God. Friendship of the world is incompatible with the love of Jesus. It represents direct opposition to the divine will. It involves embracing the world's sin, values, and evil pleasures. Every man who seeks it first and foremost declares himself an enemy of God. If you profess to love and serve Jesus, yet your heart is set upon the world, you are an adulterer and adulteress. You may pretend to be a true Christian, but God who knows and reads the hearts of all men knows differently. The pulpit commentary declared, God's claims are absolute and admits no rival. Hence, a Christian must love God with all of his heart and not love the world with all of its godlessness. William Burkitt said, For God reckons we love him not at all if we love him not above all. The friendship of the world stands in competition with and indisposes you from doing God's will. So great is the disagreement between God and the world that if you incline your heart to the world, you alienate yourself from God. You are no longer married to him, but divorced. What a sharp contrast this adulterous generation is to the one described in Psalm 24, 6, which says, This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. In verse 4, this generation is described as having clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. These are the true Christians, the true and faithful worshipers. They seek God above everything. They seek him in first place with their whole hearts. They make it their care and study to know him, his mind and will, and to please and serve him. They desire nothing more than to be in communion with him, and in conformity unto him. Their hearts are purged from all hypocrisy and deceit. They don't value or desire the vain things of this world. They have made God their portion. They are true to him, not swearing deceitfully, pretending to be his follower while living contrary. Lastly, they show their allegiance and faithfulness to him. Yes, even in this adulterous and sinful generation, by not being ashamed of him and of his words. Like a faithful wife, they are not ashamed 
of letting people know that they believe and love the doctrines of Christ. They are not ashamed of letting people know exactly where they stand on the truths of the Bible, no matter the cost. Nothing stands between them and their Lord. They are not ashamed to stand alone for their biblical convictions, no matter who is offended. They stand apart from the adulterous and sinful generation. They are the wise. They are the stars to whom the prophet Daniel referred in Daniel 12, 3, who are burning and shining lights in this very dark world and age. Let me ask you, does this describe you? Or would you be counted as an adulterer and adulteress like so many today?